anyways today i just thought that you know hold on who starts an intro like that literally no greeting well everybody deserves a second chance so let's give this video a second chance guys How you doing? welcome back to my youtube channel i have missed you all on here i've seen your messages your support the text today i just thought that you know i'm in the spirit of filming it just entered me and i'm like you know what why don't i do a like no it's not it's not going to be like me talking to you guys so it's going to be something like um asking all the questions that everyone has been asking me like since the beginning of my channel since i created my channel especially with moving to brennan university as you guys know i moved to canada 2021 september the fall and i'm currently a second year nursing student i was actually in nursing and i switched into psychiatric nursing a story for another day to tell you a lot has happened you guys can't wait to you know fill you guys in because i know you a lot of you guys are actually like waiting to hear what happened to me why did i stop filming i'm going to answer that but today i'm just going to be answering all the comments i've received under my channel especially with moving and i hope you guys enjoy this video so yeah before we begin this video i just want to put a disclaimer out there that i am not an immigration consultant so whatever um answer you get from this video i just based on my own research so um i would just be doing like i think um 10 questions or oh, probably not even up to 10 i think but like i'll just be asking a few answering rather like a few questions that a lot of you all have like you know asked me in the past and especially concerning moving into brandon university or getting admission into canada but this video will mainly be about brandon university and like you can see i'm wrapping the school brandon university so yeah so let's just get right into this video question here is um what are the admission requirements or process to attend brandon university so as you all know brandon university is um one of the universities in canada manitoba yeah that is affordable for international students so yeah so brandon university is in brandon so brandon is a city manitoba is the province and then like canada and in order to like get like um admitted you need to complete and submit like an application form and i think um with international students it's it's within the range of like let's say 140 dollars canadian dollars and then if you are not an international student if you're like a resident a permanent resident um you would be paying like half of it that's like seventy dollars so after filling the form you would also like be asked to submit like your documents so um if you are coming from high school you'll be asked to submit like your WIAC gce or like your like the regular WIAC. i don't even know what it's called but either your gce yeah or your WIAC because i know they call it YAC because i personally did i i wrote all the exams i wrote YAC gce WIAC and um what they call it neko but the one required for international students coming from nigeria to be particular is um the WIAC and um, YAC gce and then you when it comes to um the english proficiency test when i did mine i did not have to do it like i i don't think like especially if you're from nigeria you'll be asked to but it's something you should also keep in mind you probably will be asked to do it because i know like literally every time you go on to the website to you know see the admission requirement it's either being changed or something that's been modified so yeah so just keep that in mind so even if you wouldn't necessarily use it for the admission you might use it for your visa but when i did mine i didn't have to write the proficiency test but i have a couple of my friends that have to like you know write the test so yeah and then there's also um 
so i've said that so you, for your work you need to have like a minimum of five um subjects that has a c both english and math and then you also have to submit it with your you know scratch card that has like your serial number the place you wrote the exam the date and the year and then there's also a program called the hkdsc so that is for students with a hong kong diploma or secondary education where they are required to have a level of um, minimum level three in all course subjects so it has to be english chinese mathematics and liberal studies and i think you also have to like satisfy the english language proficiency requirements so like i think this is compulsory for this um, program and also yeah so um i would also like post the link where you can you know get more information on you know okay so the next question is how is the tuition like okay so as an international student coming into canada you're going to be paying double the amount of what domestic students will pay so if um um the domestic students are paying 3k you probably pay like twice the amount for a particular degree but tuition i feel is it depends mainly on like your credit hours so if you're doing like um let's say 15 or 30 credit hours like when i did my pre nursing i did 30 credit hours but now that i'm into the main program i think i'm doing like 31 credit hours so yeah so it depends on the credit hours that will go with the way your tuition would be if i'm making any sense and it would usually be like from 11k to 20k canadian dollars for international students so yeah so you just need to know what um course you would be taking so every course has their own price and then the amount of credit hours because like most times some people do take their courses for two years so like for me i took my um pre courses for two years so some people take it for one year so all of that to so but then you will pay within like a range of 11k to 20k and yeah i'm also going to like um post like on the email that you can reach out to to get more information and clarity on this okay moving over how much is staying on campus rest okay so yeah i think i meant mentioned i made a video like i was moving into rest i think a lot of you all saw it yeah so i stayed in the uh, mcmaster hall so mcmaster is like an all-inclusive res um so we have three mcmaster darak and flora cohen so flora cohen is like an all-female um darak is an all-male and then mcmaster like it's like all genders yeah so you would pay within the range of 8k to 12k and it also depends on your meal plan so just budget that amount for international students or just think i don't know much about like domestic residents but i'm just speaking for international students so yeah so it depends on your meal plan too so you need to take note of that and also uh i know someone has asked me before if um which of the residents did i like so i stayed in mcmaster and i think i preferred it because you would have like you have all the fun stuff there like there was like a tv um where we had like game night like a big screen for game nights there was always like pizza nights and all those kind of fun stuff so like it was really nice and you will meet like a lot of people like it is more diverse yeah that's the word it is more diverse so it was really nice and i have like a couple of cool i didn't have a roommate roommate i, I think i don't know if it's because of covid but I, I honestly want to think it's because of COVID. That's why I didn't have a roommate. But the room was not actually like, oh, you would have a roommate. But I know a couple of people said, like, when they were in res, they had, like, um, roommates, especially in McMaster. But my room, when I came in, it didn't look like um, it was meant for two people. It was just for one person. So it was just me. And then the only thing was that I shared a bathroom with somebody else so it was like a link the bathroom could link you to either of the book like either rooms so yeah that was just how it was so it's just nice per se to actually stay in residence for your first year because it's closer to the classroom like i know most of a couple of my friends 
if we had like an 8 30 class i would wake up around eight o'clock or even 8 20 and i'll be able to stay middle of my class but people that stayed on campus or me staying on campus i'm um, sorry not on campus off campus now i if i will need to go for an 8 30 class mind you i'm not a morning person everybody knows that i have to be up at around let's say seven o'clock or even six something because before i'll mentally prepare myself to go to school and all that kind of stuff it can just be a lot especially when you're not even having it so yeah staying in rest if you can afford it it's actually nice to stay in rest i would i would actually yeah suggest that in your first year stay in rest the only thing you probably not like enjoy is the food because you know our taste buds are different but like it, it's a nice experience honestly i wouldn't lie so yeah let's go on to the next question i don't think i'm even counting but like <laughs> Oh my god, the next question is Do you need IELTS? You guys, I just realized while editing, I did not pronounce the word correctly. It is the IELTS test, so the International English Language Proficiency Test. So I apply, so I think the I, I sorry, oh my god, the IELTS, I honestly don't know what it stands for, but I know it's an international English test, right? But for the admission process, it's not everyone that will necessarily need it, but like it's something to keep in mind, basically, especially as an international student. I've I've heard a lot of people say when we applying for their visas, they we are required to have it. So it's not bad if you, you know, have the test. Like me personally, I never had it. I wish I did, but like I know, like maybe along the line, like in the long run, when I apply for like a work permit or a permanent residency, I'll need to write that. But like. Personally, I, I never did that to attend, like, PU, but it's something to just keep in mind. You may or may not use it. Yeah, that's why I'm good. So, I think this is the fifth question, if I'm not mistaken, you guys. So, someone else asked me, how is the nursing program at PU? Okay. So, nursing is a very, very competitive course. Like, it is competitive. Like, I think it's one of the most competitive courses in Brandon University, or even as a whole. So, they they enroll only 60 students for nursing and, I think, 35 for psych. So, like I said, I was once um, uh, a nursing student, but I switched to psych. But, yeah, so it's a very competitive course, both nursing, because both nursing and psych, they are all in classified as health studies. So they are both very competitive. It, it was actually, I would say it was challenging. You have some classes that are very, very challenging, especially with um, AMP and, um, you know, statistics. And um, I think some people actually found... Um, like doing like the fundamentals like doing the main nursing courses to challenging so yeah i would say that would be challenging but the thing is one thing that i know that i would just want to i just want to put out there is um do or study the best way you can in a way that suits you like look for um plan yourself in a way where you can study and assimilate in the long run because as a nursing student it's what you will need like you will need to learn not to pass but learn to to know the information because you're gonna use it when you're gonna go for your clinical so it's something to keep in mind yeah so and i think yeah if you're doing nursing biology is um a course to that would be challenging that i know it yeah biology and biology and med, med micro like med micro biology so it's one of few of your hardest classes those classes are literally not it but yeah it's one thing is it's doable you can do it and i think you need to have a gpa of 2.0 yeah like all c's but it's something because it's a competitive course you do not want to have all c's you you would at least want to maintain a gpa of like 2.5 and above yeah because it is it is competitive it is really competitive so yeah and it's also going to help you if you have like a good gpa when you enter into like the main program it's easier for you not to slack because if you need to graduate you have to also have a gpa of 2.5 so if you have 2.0 as a gpa and you enter into the main program you would you would just it would be a struggle to you know 
like increase your gpa so that's something to keep in mind so yeah it's a competitive course but it is doable it was really challenging for me personally there were some days i wanted to give up but yeah at the end of the day um i didn't i even had i even failed one class yeah i had to retake a class so yeah it can be overwhelming so but at the end of the day what i learned is like do not pro procrastinate anything like when you no matter the course you do do not just procrastinate <laughs> it's something that i battled with die like i battled with procrastination die like it's crazy it's something i still battle with but yeah so do not procrastinate and you know just realize that studying in the university is something that it's a it's a process and you are responsible for your own learning you're responsible for whatever information you you gain in school because it's not like high school where you read and you see verbatim what your teacher has said but it's like you have to know this stuff because you, you're dealing with the human body mm -hmm. so you have to you know be always alert and yeah you'll be fine you'll be good so for whoever watching this video and you are interested in applying to the bachelors of nursing or psych nursing i know a lot of students don't know that brand university does psych nursing like i didn't know that it was when i came here that i was like uh, i feel like i'm gonna do better with psych and i switched so i entered into the program so if you have any questions you can always reach out to me on my socials i'm gonna put it down here or up here i don't know but i'm gonna put it somewhere so yeah that's it for like the nursing program at BU. the last one for this video okay so the last one of the least question is is brandon a fun place to live in and his house and sheep off campus um okay so in manitoba brandon i think is the second biggest winnipeg is like the biggest in manitoba here so brandon is second um the thing in brandon one thing about brandon now uh, it's like it's international student friendly um and getting like getting around places is easier to navigate than it's i wouldn't say brandon brandon is a small city and not like a very big city because some people when they come into brandon they feel like they're coming into like a city as big as toronto or winnipeg no it's not as busy or as big as that yeah it's very wide and it's honestly easy to like get around things like going to like the mall and to like what do you call it um the stores so yeah it's it's a fun place to live in yeah but most people prefer to live in bigger cities but it's very calm very friendly um very nice you and you find a lot of elderly people here which is really nice so yeah it's a nice place to live in and it's also student friendly housing is cheaper than on like other provinces and stuff like that yeah not cheap 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 but it's it's cheap so you can actually work to pay your rent that's one thing i'm sure of you can work to pay your rent um so staying off campus and staying on rest i think staying off campus would be cheaper because like um yeah it's cheaper staying off campus is cheaper than staying on rest because the only thing you have to like consider is like buying your groceries all right and um and it also depends on the apartment because some apartments can be apartments can be pricey than like and like other ones so yeah you just have to like make your research and i think like if you want to look for apartments like the ideal place would be you know e-brandon um and also i don't know if you're coming from like let's say if you're not in canada but if you're in canada and you're looking for a verse I would suggest Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is ideal to get anything like instead of buying like for your furnitures, like you can buy second hand from like Facebook Marketplace or yeah, even uh, you can see anything literally in Facebook Marketplace. Even getting a car, you can get your car from Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, so I can also do like a separate video on like where to get stuff. But if you're coming from let's say like outside Canada yeah i think ebrandon will be the best bet for you ebrandon yeah the ca i think mm -hmm. i know a lot of my friends got their houses from there if you're also looking like to get a job um indeed will be like you would be like um yeah the a best place the best place i think to get a job 
I know that there are other places, but yeah, I know the frequent no, like the one we frequently use is um indeed. Mm -hmm. So um this is the end of my video. I hope <laughs> you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. Just as if I was talking to you guys and honestly I I'm going to, you know, you know, finally like you know let you all know why I stopped filming and I honestly pray that the spirit of filming enters me because I just felt like I've stabbed you guys enough and that's why I decided to make this video so I really appreciate like. I actually hope that you enjoyed this video so much as to sub subscribe oh it's a nice dog yeah subscribe and you know thanks for stopping by my channel thanks for listening to me talk and if you are coming to brandon university and you see me anywhere you know you can feel free to say hi to me i don't bite some people say i have a serious face that I look unapproachable but honestly i don't bite i don't bite at all yeah so you can say hi and i hope that you know whoever is getting into you know my course nursing you know you can hit me up on my socials i'm gonna drop my handle my instagram my, my tiktok my snap so yeah honestly thank you guys for you know if you literally watched it to this part thank you for your time and you know i'm really really grateful because it's not easy to navigate um school especially as a first year student just coming from high school and then entering into the university it can be a lot to process it can be challenging it can be overwhelming it can be a lot literally like it can be a lot but the thing here is that people are really really friendly if not even over friendly so your professors want to see you succeed nobody is after you not even your village people yeah you heard me not even your village people <laughs> will be after you but yeah once again i hope to see you all again in my next video if you want to see more of this you want me to ask some more questions you can send it to me on my instagram or you can comment on this video down below and like i said i'm going i'm going to be posting the links of the um places where you can get like more information on like whatever i said in this video so you guys stay safe 